Okay, welcome to the last lecture period for this term. It's going to be a quick review because I don't like those, you know, let's do a, an entire five weeks worth of material in 20 minutes kind of review. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, the pertinent details about the exam, and then I'll give you guys the question breakdown of roughly, and some of these is, you know, approximately because some questions might fall under one or two different categories, but I'll give you guys the, the breakdown and where the questions are coming from and that kind of thing. All right, so for starters, where is the exam? It's in the gym. Not by the wolves' den, the gym next to Tim Hortons. It's the one where they play basketball and volleyball. It's a big room that echoes. Yay. The next part of the good news, it's at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Sorry, folks. For those of you that can't function that early, TFB. Um, just saying. And the rule is, is when you, if you're going to run late, you'd better arrive before the first person leaves. Because once one person leaves the room for the exam, we'll get to write. Okay? So, yes, if you're running late, and you are running late, it happens. You know, I've had students get into a car accident on the way in and, you know, it slipped off a step and break their leg. That's happened. Amongst other reasons why people suddenly can't show up for an exam. And they've, you know, it sent me an email so we could make alternate arrangements. Uh, if you send me a message at 2 o'clock in the afternoon saying, oh, shit, I just woke up. I'm going to write and reply, go, oh, shit, that's an easy zero. I'm very sorry for you, but it's still going to be a zero, right? Unless you have a good reason, you, you got to be there. Um, so, yeah, try to be on time. That's all I've got to say. You're writing with the other CST 8215 section, so there's going to be uh, around 200 plus of you guys in there at once. Yay. Um, and it's the best kind of exam desks. You know the kind. It wobbles a little. The chairs squeak a little. Just prepare yourself. They've been using the same desks for those exams since the school started, I swear. Um, the exam is 80 minutes. So, you know, 80 minutes. It's 50 multiple guess questions. I use multiple guess because I know at least a quarter of you are going to be guessing some of the answers. I just say the way it is, you know. Um, with Scantron, which means a few things. Have you guys done a Scantron test yet? Have they actually explained to you about how anal retentive Scantron is? Let me demonstrate. One, two, three, four, five. And look, I'm doing it blue just like the real one. Okay. That is how you fill your bubble. This, 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 and that will not scan. Okay, just warning you now. The other thing is you want to take, make sure it's an HB pencil. You know, don't get those fancy art, hard, those hard pencils that draw really, really light. Man, it's going to be as dark as my soul. Like, get an HB pencil. Make sure that circle is filled in. Which leads you to issue number two. From what I've determined, Scantron... Hang on, I've just got to make this right. Reads this way. So when it's scanning each of your answers, it scans each column left to right. Which means... You go, oh, crap, this one's the wrong answer. You do a quick and dirty erasing job. And then you fill in, say, this one. Let's pretend that's filled in right. Actually, that would probably work. 
you got 55th chance it'll still take that as your correct answer. So you want to come in also with a very good, you know those white erasers? Like the white vinyl erasers? Come in with a really good eraser. Don't use that pink eraser that rips the paper. That's crap. So avoid having bubbles that look like this. Like if you can get it looking like that, you're probably fine. Just avoid badly erased. So the rule is if you have done a bad job in your Scantron sheet, just fold it and hold it up in the air. We'll bring you a new Scantron sheet. Um, now, for some of you might be saying, okay, well, 50 minutes over, 50 questions over 80 minutes is not that long. It's more than adequate. Um, it gives you literally more than one minute per question. And a lot of these questions you should be able to answer in 30 seconds. You read it, you answer it. And at the end, you must return the exam booklet and the Scantron sheet. We use the exam booklet as your attendance. I will show you guys the first page of it, not the first page of questions, the first page of the exam. There's a spot where it looks like this. There's a bunch of rules. They say to bring in your photo ID. If you lost your photo ID, at least put like, you know, some other version of photo ID in the corner so that it we can more or less identify who you are. So as we're going through and we see somebody looks a little extra sketch, we can take a quick look and say, that's not you. You'd laugh, that's happened. Where somebody gets there, uh, they call it a pinch header for themselves. Um, so we want to bring in your photo ID. Um, if just get up and run out the door without actually asking us to run out the door. I don't mean like you didn't, f you finished your test and hand your stuff to us crying and then you run out the door. I'm talking about you just get up and run out the door without saying a word. There's a good chance we're not going to let you back in. At least say something to us if you need to go to the bathroom or whatever. Uh, pretty much guaranteed we're not going to escort you to the bathroom. Uh, there has been times where it was done during some very heavy cheating terms where we actually had uh, somebody sitting in the hall and I'd escorted the students to and from the bathroom to make sure they weren't. Hey, just think they weren't actually taking a detour to go check their notes. Yeah. Um, th th as far as I know, there's going to be none of that this term. I'm not in charge of the exam. I'm just, you know, relaying the message. Um, okay. There's no study aids, no cheat sheets, obviously no computers, no phones. I totally recommend you come in with the bare minimum of what you need. We're not going to be responsible for your personal belongings. We normally say, put your bag under your desk. Your phone should go in there. Your phone should be muted or turned off. Smartwatches? No. I caught two people last term. You know, when I see you go, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And they're doing it more than once, right? And I'm like, then I notice they're freaking wearing a freaking Apple Watch. You know, so smart watches are no no. If you wear a smart watch on the regular, it's going in your bag. Watch like his is cool. It's mechanical. It's hard to cheat with. I'm just saying, it's the best kind. It's the only way. It's the only kind we can trust. I don't mean a gadget watch. You go poop and the top pops open. Uh, just good old fashioned mechanical. Um, there's going to be a, a little bit further down. There's a spot where you print your name and you sign it. Last term, this is a I guess the whoever wrote this exam last term thought a signature was good enough, and it got to the point where I couldn't tell who was signing the paper. Hey, when I see this, I don't know. When I see some moon runes, whether it's Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, I don't know what that says. I can't identify that as your name. Uh, if you sign in Cyrillic, I still don't know what your name is. I've seen people sign in every imaginable language and go, that's my picture. That tells nothing to me. Um, so we now have a slot for print your full name. 
as it appears in Axis or uh, uh, Brightspace, one or the other. Um, there, you might be given last minute instructions by one of us. So, you know, if we suddenly give you guys a sudden change of instructions because, I don't know, something's happening, then that. Um, as you can guess, there's going to be disciplinary action if you do a bad thing. Uh, if you walk out with a test or, you know, you communicate with another student and we catch you. I also know Morse code. You laughed. It's happened. I literally have once I'm walking through the room and I'm like, I hear. I'm like. I'm like, and I'm like, wait a second, Boy Scouts, wait. No, literally, that's what they said. They they that was at seventeen, I'm like seventeen. Then a little bit further, I hear. So I spent the half the exam doing laps around that area trying to figure out the two who did it. We did catch them, but it took us a good forty-five minutes to catch them. So they almost got away with it. So you know. Within reason, don't do anything stupid. I mean, you think it's, you guys are laughing like I'm joking. The shit I've seen during an exam in the last 16 years would shock you. Um, I've seen it all. So, yeah. Um, it says on here the examination must be completed individually. Yes, it's not a team effort, folks. Oh, and because I don't speak your language doesn't mean I don't know you're talking to someone else for answers. Some people seem to think, just because I don't know what you're saying, the fact that it's, uh, you hear blah, 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 and then blah, 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 a little further. I'm like, come on. How stupid do you think we are? So front page of the exam, you're going to print your name and sign it. And then a little blurb at the end says, you've got to try to pick the best available answer to each question. Um, I've gone through the exam. I've made some adjustments to the exam before I gave it back to her for final adjustments on her part. I try to make sure that the questions were Fairly straightforward and understandable. Um, some of these, some of her exams in the past have been known for being a little vague. A little vague. Um, open to interpretation. Or um, you need to take it, translate it to another language and bring it back to actually understand the question. Um, I've seen that. And I made a point to make sure there was none of that happening on this test as best I could. I didn't have the final say, but I... You guys will be able to pick up my questions. Okay, so that is the preamble for the exam, as in what's happening, how it's going, what the rules are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you are going to bring water, clear bottle. This might be unacceptable. That's fine. We can see what's in it. Um, 9 a.m., I usually don't get too upset about, uh, yes, clear. Um, it's just in the past we've had people come in with, no, no shit. So the reason we like seeing a transparent one is we can see whether or not somebody slipped a piece of paper in it. Or if it's full of uh, brandy. It is early. It's a little early to be hitting the brandy. The 1, 1 p.m. exam, that's okay. Um, all right. So, and you think I'm joking about that. I have had a case where somebody came in with a water bottle. When they opened it, I smelt it three rows over. It was pure moonshine. Gut rot. Okay. So, here is way, the way it's being broken down. So, you can, you oh. The, the hybrids are not on the final exam. The labs are not on the final exam. You need to understand SQL. As in, you, you have to be able to read an SQL statement and understand what it's going to do. There will be questioned with, oh, if, if, if based on this SQL statement, this is what's going to happen. You don't have to write any SQL. 
it's all multiple guess. So there'll be a statement saying, SQL statement looks like this. What out of the four options, which one do you think is the right answer? Uh, I've also tried to avoid a lot of uh, A and B type questions. You know, option A, option B, option C, none of the above, option D, A and B. So I've, I've, I remember it, there aren't any of those. So, or not many of those. Okay, so here's the breakdown. There is a section, 11 questions or so on the where clause. So predicates, like statement. Um, I'm gonna post this on Brightspace. It'll be right in the announcement with the recording. Um, so that'll be, you know, pattern matching, the where, how and or works, um, strings versus dates, that kind of thing. There'll be nine questions or so about DDL indexes and views, because DDL indexes and views are pretty much all part of the same thing. So there's gonna be nine questions about that. You know, what is the what is the command that lets you, you know, create a table? I mean, come on. Well, it's a create table, not create a table. That would get you a zero. Um, there's uh, roughly eight questions about aggregates. So this will include stuff like min and max count some group by and having. Those go together. Order by is a uh, general SQL. So which is general SQL, which includes sorting, which is order by. Uh, column selection, you know, select star versus select whatever. Insert, update, delete. Um, what was that? So there's roughly 10 general SQL questions. Um, I mean, there's 50 questions on the test, right? So, and then there's seven questions about joins and subqueries. So when you go through the slides and you're reviewing the material for the test, you want to focus on the ones you have a hard time with. And this gives you the breakdown of, you know, which way you should study. It's not so much, there aren't any questions of, uh, in your opinion, which of the following be the most efficient way to write this SQL statement? There's nothing like that. Um, there's, I guarantee there's uh, three or four questions about SQL, about what is this going to do? Um, there is a few about inserts. Um, oh yeah, there's five about transactions. So, you know, what starts a transaction, what ends a transaction, you know, how do you undo a transaction? Failures of transactions, that kind of stuff. Um, so basically put the, the recommended reading from the textbook to expand what's on the slides is what you want to do. So review the slides, anything you're not sure, go read the appropriate pages in the textbook. And at that point, you should be pretty good. And if you're still not sure, then go watch the appropriate recording, which is another reason why I don't do one of those intensive, wait, slide, fast forward through all the slides of the term, because you can go look them up in the, right, in the, right in the recordings. And uh, all right, so now I'm going to open the floor for questions. So you got about five minutes for questions. Okay, he beat you. And he, well, he was, it was you, it was you first. Yes, nothing from the first half. It is not a cumulative exam. We did a split exam um, because, um, and the, the, this, the person who redesigned this course a couple of terms ago agreed with me where uh, we believe in what's called continuous evaluation. You evaluate once, you might evaluate a second time. In other words, you do a lab, you do a test, then you're done. You move on to new topics, you don't go back. So it's an efficient way to get for you guys to study because right now you'd have to spend three days trying to remember everything from the first half of the term. How much of you guys actually remember that? Yeah. But the assignment erased everything you knew about the course, right? At least the second assignment basically builds the entirety of the second half of the course and it forces you to just memorize it all. <laughs> There, you know. Um, all right, you. What are the most difficult parts? 
I didn't find this test particularly difficult. No, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going in blind, right? And then I handed it to my daughter. Well, yeah, she's 20. She's doing her co-op at uh, the CRA right now. So she's not a programmer. She went through computer system technician, but she took a small, small course on database. Like, imagine your entire term crammed into three weeks, four weeks. And I made her scan the test. And she goes, she goes, I'd be able to pass this without having the material to go with it. So a lot of the questions are self-explanatory. Do not assume what the question is reading right away. Read it, make sure you actually understand what the question is asking before you answer. What you're going to find the hardest on the test is making sure you understand the question. Considering in this room, um, native English speakers are heavily outnumbered. I'm counting against the, the English speakers too. Just because I don't have an accent doesn't mean I'm native English. So, you know, make sure, we, I made sure that the questions were reasonably North American English. Not so weird. Not oh, British English is okay. South African English. Nigerian English. Australian. That's that that's pretty weird over there too. Right? It's pretty standard. It's the same English you'd hear me speak in class as much as I could. Um so what is the hardest? It'll be the hardest part will be making sure you understand what's being asked. More than a specific there is not one specific topic that's hard. So there's a few, I think there's one or two about, uh, the ones on joins might be difficult for you, depending if you had a hard time with it. It really depends on what topic you had a hard time understanding. So, hey. Eh? Yeah. Subqueries and joins. Um, the good news is it's only seven out of the 50 questions. Well, I'm just calling it the way it is, right? But if you did okay with the where and the predicates, you don't have a problem with the sorting and the column selection. That's a half the test done right there. So you can focus on the ones you're weak. Um, I did post a link for MySQL tutorial. It does a fantastic job covering joins and subqueries and stuff. It is in the announcements at some point. Um, if you just hit that site, it'll have... It has tutorials where you can actually try it and it explains to you how it's done. And of course they use different wording than I did and then what's in the textbook. So sometimes reading it a third way is the magic trick for some people. But mysqltutorial.org, I think it is. And it's it's a really good resource. All right, next question. Going once, going twice, two and a half. Three. Guess what, folks? We're done. I told you it was going to be the shortest lecture of the term. 